simply the most common mistake, I would say. The most common mistake is, is not being customer focused. So the most common problem we see is a team that comes into our office and they're really excited about their technology. And you know, they've invented this really cool thing that they think if the world sees this, they'll come pounding on their door, right? And, and so we make the distinction between an inventor and an innovator when we characterize entrepreneurs. And you know, inventors are guys that come up with something cool and they think it's cool and probably their roommates think it's cool too, but it's not at all clear that most people will think it's cool. They're just not customer centric. Their goal in life is to get their technology into the market. That's their goal. The innovator entrepreneur, on the other hand, sees a problem, an opportunity out there and figures out a solution and puts together that solution, takes it to the customers, and if the customers don't like it, the innovator says, oh, okay, fine, I'll do something different to make sure that the customers like it. The inventor's attitude, when the inventor goes to a customer and the customer doesn't like it, the, inventor, the inventor's typical attitude is, well, they don't get it, right? <laughs> Probably the biggest mistake that we see would be founders who don't get along well together. Another common one would, would be um, thinking that starting a company is a trial and error process. And, you know, there's a lot of press about the pivot where an entrepreneur does one thing and then, oh, the next morning we decided to do something else and then a week later we pivoted again. Um, some of those things do work out, but I think that's really um, a crapshoot. Uh, you're much better off to have a very good idea of what you're going to do and what you're going to focus on when you start and not think that we'll just find our way along the way because it usually doesn't work. If you want to have a wonderful time, I was a Boy Scout when I was a teenager and we were taught to be prepared and you didn't go hiking in the Sierras in the winter time on a, on a two or three day hike without preparing for everything, thinking about everything that could happen, how far you're going to go, how much food you need, how cold it's going to be, who you're going with, all the tools that you'll need. I think a startup is very similar at the very beginning. You don't just rush out into the wilderness in the mountains and hope that everything works out because you'll probably die. And you're better off to think about what you're going to do and be prepared for what you're going to do. One of the biggest that's natural is they try to get the highest valuation for their idea. And uh, often that causes a couple different issues. One, the investors that may be able to help you grow the business the, the best might be turned off by trying to seek that very top dollar. Secondly, when you get a high valuation sometimes, it causes bigger problems if, you aren't, if, you, if your business doesn't develop as fast as what you promised investors. And that, that, again, can cause some real issues. And so I think, you know, what you want as an entrepreneur, I believe, is to get the, a fair valuation, but with the best investors you can find. Because they're the ones that are going to help take this idea and really bring it to life and create the significance.